Welcome back to the News at 10. The ongoing trial of Justice Sylvester Nguta of the Supreme Court today suffered a setback following the inability of the federal government to produce its witness in court. Justice Nguta is being prosecuted on a 14-count charge bordering on alleged money laundering and unlawful possession of two valid diplomatic passports. At the resumption of trial, the prosecution, Olufemi Fatunde, was to call witness number four, but failed to do so. The counsel was unhappy that she was unable to produce the next prosecution witness in court, saying the witness still has some health challenges and would be available by the next adjourned date. The defense counsel, Mr. Kanu Agabi, did not object to the request for an adjournment, and the matter was subsequently adjourned to October the 26th for continuation of trial. A new maternity unit sponsored by the Prince Ebano supermarket has been launched in the Ibejuleki General Hospital Akodo in Lagos. The ultra-modern structure was put up in collaboration with Development Africa, a non-governmental organization, and the federal and state governments. It all started when Sunday Egede and David Ojay, directors of the Prince Ebano supermarket chain, brought an accident victim to the general hospital at Ibejuleki and did not find the facilities adequate. From then, a seed to build a ward was sown and the harvest is being reaped in the commissioning of this maternity unit. The Development Africa is an international NGO and we work in about 22 states in Nigeria. Uh, improving health and education. This hospital is definitely um, sets a standard and pace for social responsibility. The Commissioner for Health, who graces the occasion, appreciates the results the state gets when it partners with the private sector. They wanted to address the issue of access. They also wanted to address the issue of quality and of course cost of care. And that is what, as a state government, we are determined to pursue. For the sponsors, embarking on corporate social responsibility initiatives is a call that must be answered. In the words of Mr. David O.J., in life, we will be judged by how many lives we impact and not by how much wealth we keep for our children. The ward is formally launched with the traditional cutting of tape and unveiling of plaque. Is for the rich and for the elites. These ones can afford the bill flying up and down outside the country to pay hospital bill, but where we are presently, they can't. So they are the targeted audience. As a company policy, we have set aside certain percentage of our income to do projects like this. An inspection of the maternity unit, led by Development Africa's Joshua Campanier, reveals a fully air-conditioned interior with state-of-the-art equipment, including a labor ward, theater, and ample bed space. Transparency in governance, that's the message coming from the Ogun State Governor Ibikule Amoso to political office holders. He also encouraged citizens to continue to participate actively in matters of state. The governor emphasized this during the 2018 budget town hall meeting at the June 12 Cultural Center in Abeokuta, the state capital. Less than two months to the end of the year 2017, the Ogun State Government is taking stock and looking into the year ahead. That necessitated this town hall meeting with civil servants, non-governmental organizations, civil society groups, artisans and other members of the public. They all want to know how the current administration in the state has fared so far and make an input for the coming year. First, the State Commissioner for Budget and Planning, Mrs. Adere Le Adesino, enumerates the milestones covered by the government. Ogun State is currently the most significantly significant state in solid minerals in the Federation at this time. Its solid minerals output exceeds the number two state by 30 percent. And that is with a lot of potential still untapped. For Governor Mosu, there'll have to be follow-up on the suggestions made here to ensure an adequate budget planning process. Uh, working together has, and we always elicit positive and fruitful outcomes. Therefore, all hands must, as always and as usual, be on deck to see that the successes we have jointly achieved are sustained until the end of our tenure 
and that we have a solid foundation that will provide a basis for further development of our dear state. At the end of the town hall meeting, participants appeared filled with optimism that the 2018 fiscal year will be beneficial to all. Boosting the agriculture value chain in Nigeria will require the exchange of information and strategic investments. Now that formed the crux of discussions at the UK-Nigeria Agritech Summit that took place in London in the United Kingdom. The Minister of Agriculture, Adwe, and some state governors were among the participants at the event. Agriculture is a branch of the Nigerian economy which has provided employment for about 30% of the population as of 2010. At the moment, the sector is being transformed by commercialization at the small, medium and large-scale enterprise levels. For agriculture to keep its pride of place, there's a need to exchange information and technology, and this is why the Minister of Agriculture and a team of state governors are attending the UK Nigeria Agritech Summit holding in London. The world is driven by trade and exchange of uh, knowledge, services, and water. And I think we, we, it's about time that uh, we energize that relationship which has been there for so very long. Our population is growing. We're heading for. By 2050, 450 million people, which will be 5% of humanity. That means then that uh, uh, we need to expand agriculture, improve it, modernize it using new technologies and techniques. And um, we have to feed the world of 9 billion people. Boosting agriculture also requires both internal and external funding. You can't borrow from commercial banks in Nigeria to develop agriculture. I mean, with double digits, uh, you cannot make it. So. I think uh, we have started the process, and thanks to our president, President Mohamed Buhari, I think he has exposed all of us uh, into this uh, agriculture from day one. And there is no other time to take the business more seriously as Africa waits on Nigeria. Today we are importing agricultural products and produce from other countries. We have no business doing that. So if you look at Nigeria as a whole, in population, in land mass, in latent potential, we, are, we have no option but to focus on agriculture. We must feed the rest of Africa uh, and they are looking up to us to make this uh, uh, possible. When all is done, action points from here are key to success. It's been very insightful and we had the mini send six governors today, which is just very powerful and shows you such huge potential for partnership. Um, we had a very large delegation from Nigeria and we have some very key action points, especially on export development, especially on you know building trade barriers, especially on getting technical expertise from the UK, replicating best practices in the market as well. So it's been a very fantastic and, you know, um, um, events and we've gotten really good feedback as well. As participants take their leave from here, many Nigerians will be looking forward to more transformation in this sector, which will not only bring benefits to farmers, but also a source of food sustenance to the country's teeming population. Let's cross over to some business news. Yes, Emana Amawe. You first. First Bank. Hello, welcome to Business News. A research report by independent investment banking firm Afriinvest has shown that Nigerian banks recorded an industry gross earning of 16.4% in 2016. The figure represents an improvement over the 10.4% recorded in the preceding year. Though still faced with cost pressures, the chief executive of Afri Invest, Mr. Ike Chioke, at the presentation of the report today, explains the silver lining in sight. The tier two banks might have issues, but um, we think it's something that the system can can tolerate so long as we continue to further reform and look at the sort of the current position with more optimism, optimism that we can't want to continue to reform and make it a more uh, sort of beneficial environment for everyone. Now, if, on the flip side, if we take a more sort of hawkish stance, it could it could lead to trouble. As we go into 2018, we see that there's going to be more increase in government spending. 
And as part of plans to actualize the demutualization of the Nigerian Stock Exchange, new tradable instruments are expected to be introduced for foreign and local investors. In a bid to meet this demand, the chairman of the Chartered Institute of Stock Brokers Conferences, Mrs. Lillian Ulubi, explains how stock brokers are bracing up for human capacity building in the area of derivatives trading. As businesses seek for alternative ways to raise capital, and as investors look to further diversify their portfolios from traditional assets, it has become imperative to encourage innovation of financial products. For this reason, we will be discussing very intently options and strategies for deepening our local market through the introduction of new products such as derivatives, commodities, sukuk, and alternative assets. Introduction of new products will help deepen the market and, of course, expand professional knowledge base on diverse investment products, thus encouraging more investor participation and deepening our finance professionals. Also, advancement of technology in finance profession has become very imperative in improving investors' experience and supporting efficiency drive of brokers. On the broker's side, clearly execution of transactions will be more seamless through the introduction of further fintech innovations. And for the investors, it is becoming mainstream to trade equities via your mobile phone and online platforms. And now for company news, cement giant Lafarge Africa has released its nine-month earnings results, showing mixed performance in its 2017 financial statement. The group's revenue from continuing operations grew by 39.8% from 161.04 billion naira to 223.67 billion naira, while gross income rose by 219.8% to 57.9 billion naira as at September the 30th. On the other hand, the company made a profit before tax of 1.09 billion naira against a 40.37 billion naira loss before tax, while its net income was just 938 million naira against a 37.4 billion naira loss after tax reported in 2016. And investors' appetite for stocks on the NSC dropped further at the close of today's trading session amid reactions to more third quarter earnings results and market information from listed equities. Let's join Chimeze Obiwago for the details. Hello and welcome to the Stock Market Report. It's really trying times for the equities market as the Oando saga continues to have ripple effects on the market. The shares of the indigenous energy company has also been suspended on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange. Profit taken by investors saw the oil share index decline by 0.16%. All the sectors recorded losses except the industrial sector, which gained 0.11% owing to the impressive result turned in by Cement Company of Northern Nigeria. Transaction value was a paltry 2 billion naira, while the volume closed at about 107 million shares in 3,193 deals. Despite the broadly positive results so far, the equities market has not reacted in line with the performance of the companies. However, traders are hopeful things will begin to shape up next week. And that was the stock market report. I'm Chimeze Obi Iwago. In the meantime, U.S. stock markets closed higher a few hours ago on rising expectations of lower corporate taxes following the passage of a $4 trillion budget proposal by the U.S. Senate for tax reform later this year. It's also a positive close for other major world markets. And that's a package on business news tonight. I'm Imana Amawe. The news at 10 continues. You first. First Bank. 
Thanks, Imana. Still ahead on the news at 10, Francisca Odega is set to become the first Nigerian to play in the Spanish Women League after she joined Atletico Madrid Femenino on a loan deal. That's on sports. Just